Hello YouTubers, this is a quick fun session where uh, I get to show you what it's like to kind of take the engineering standard uh, that we also call the standard and apply it to different frameworks and different paradigms and different uh, programming languages. Uh, today I was hanging out with a bunch of friends and a friend of mine who started doing some development in Golang kind of, you know, we kind of explored the idea of the possibility of applying the standard, you know, to Golang. Golang is a programming language developed by Google. It's super performant. Uh, one of the people that actually are engaged in designing uh, this language was one of the uh, creators of the C programming language. I think his name is Brian Thompson or something like that. So uh, I talked to my friend a little bit and I said, no, it's impossible that you can take the concepts of the standard, the engineering standard, and actually apply it to uh, something like Golang. So I was like, you know, okay, you know, challenge accepted. Let's go ahead and see, you know, what what it takes to actually implement something like this in Golang. And I'm not going to lie to you, like it took me about two hours just to kind of wrap my head around some of the concepts. But, um, you know, eventually you have certain concepts in your mind, you figure it out. You kind of get to the bottom of it. So how do I start? There's a thing called Goland. Goland is a, an IDE, you know, that allows you to write, you know, uh, uh, software in Go language, and it's it's a whole bunch of it's it's one of the series of the you know Jet Brains where they have all these different you know IDEs for all kinds of different languages. If you've heard of IntelliJ for Java, and then they also have I think IntelliJ for Scala. There's all kinds of different even for .NET they have things for .NET. They have a whole bunch of you know different you know IDEs to support different languages. So if you think that Visual Studio is the only you know, IDE, it, it is definitely the most uh, capable and most integrated with everything, but it's not the only IDE that you can use for uh, writing in C Sharp. So you have all this C Lion for C, you know, you have App Code, IntelliJ, PHP Sp Storm for PHP, Python, Writer. Writer is the one that you can use to kind of write in C Sharp. Writer right here, it allows you to write in C Sharp. So, anyway. Goland, you know, went and installed Goland, and I basically started looking at, you know, creating a project in Golang, right? So I'm going to create a new project in here. Let's see if you guys can see my screen. And this is here, demo standard Golang, right? You know, there, there are going to be some funny moments. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, some things got me thinking and you know, th to my head, I was, you know, I was literally thinking like, why would you do it this way? Like, why would you do anything this way? But, but some other things were, I was like, okay, you know, all right, I'm not, I don't really love it, but it works. Okay, so let me increase the screen here just for the people uh, watching on their phones, so I can just show them what what we're dealing with here. Okay, so 175 specifically. Let me go back to my streaming situation here. There you go. Okay, that should be, I think that should be good enough. Okay, so Golang in Goland, you know, I have a, a tiny project here on the side just in case I forget things. But uh, let's let's do this. So I'm going to go here and create a new directory. I'm going to call it standard, standard Golang uh, dot source or dot core. So that's where I'm going to put my source code. But I'm going to go and do also a standard golang uh, dot uh, tests so I'm creating two different projects in here one of them for the tests and one of them for for the project itself the people that are familiar with the standard they know that we have brokers and we have a uh, let's see here we have services and we have models models like this and maybe we have controllers or clients whatever you want to do you know let's just say clients Right, so I'm building a simple uh, integrated development. Sorry, I'm building a simple app, right? And if you have never watched any of of my videos before, you know, and you you're very foreign to this concept, the way how I architect my software is that I break it into dependencies and purposes and exposures. So the dependencies are basically wrappers around whatever you're working with. So if you're talking to a database, then it's a storage broker. If you're talking to an email server, it's a it's a notification or email broker and so on and so forth. 
and then there are services and these where you do the validation and the intelligence and all that and then you have exposures exposures exposers and these exposers are basically clients controllers you if you're doing a web api if you're doing something like that it's all great right in c sharp so this is super simple because i've been working with the language for over 20 years you know 22 years now i think so that's that's a long time you know to kind of wrap your head around how things are done but what what was a good exercise for me is to basically be able to play around with a different language and apply the same concepts as an engineering standard to the same to the same language which was really hilarious and fun so let me just show you here what i'm going to do i'm going to go here and say storages so this is my uh my storage brokers and then I'm gonna go here and create a an I storage broker. I, there is no naming convention, as far as I know. If you do Alt, I think it's I think it's Alt Shift dot, it will zoom in a little bit for you. So you just really see what I'm doing, right? So this is just an I storage broker. How do you define an interface? You go and say Type I storage broker, and that's an interface. Interface like this. So far, so good. Magic, right? And then inside that guy, I want to implement a function called insert student async. Let's just say insert student because they're really asynchronous, right? I need a model in here. So I'm going to create a new directory. I'm going to call it students. And under students, I'm going to go and create a Golang model called student. Okay, how do we define this model? It's also a type, right? And it's student struct right and uh, inside that struct I can define things like I can go say ID which is an int right I can go and say name which is a string and so on and so forth I think that's how you do it I think so type struct I'm gonna I'm gonna try to not look yeah I think there's no comma in here yeah there you go and the I don't know if that's like I think that's you know uh, go land it's basically doing a little bit of magic so when you save it does the formatting for you I hope that's an option that we can get rid of. Something crazy I noticed though, if you do this while you're doing, like I guess, see, if I go and kind of push the uh, open bracket squigglies like this and click save, it'll go format it for me, right? In some places, it considers this as an error, which is hilarious. That's super hilarious to me, like why are you doing that? But anyway, that's a student model. So this will take a student model. So you type in the variable name first, like C sharp and then you type in the model and I can't get rid of this guy for the life of me I tried it's not working like I, I just want to say just give me the my student model nope you have to kind of call the entire thing uh, like that okay now you want to also define let me zoom out a little bit because it's getting a little here you want to define the return type so you want to go like this and say here's my return type so this is here is your input and this here is your return type. It's it's a mishmash of different paradigms I've seen in Scala and you know Haskell and languages like these. It has a little hint of uh, Python, I guess. It's it's weird. It's a weird language, especially like if you're if you've been doing something for like you know two decades, you know working with something like that, you're gonna have some opinions about how the syntax is working and all that. Okay, so that's the interface. Let's go implement the actual function, like the actual broker, right? So I'm going to go here and say storage broker, right? And that's going to be a type storage broker. There is no inheritance. It does some weird, weird thing when it comes to inheritance. I'll tell you about that in a second. So that's a struct. So this guy doesn't have anything. Like you can't go in there and say implement the function. How you want to implement that function, you want to go here and say this. Watch this. So you're saying this is a function in the storage broker. So in the storage broker, like you're adding after the fact, right? You're basically going and saying, this is my storage broker. And then I have a function in that storage broker called insert student, right? And this insert student will take a student as an input parameter. Let's zoom out a little bit more because we're getting out of space here. And then it's... <laughs> It's returning a a student like this. So this is a function. Now watch this. If I put the squiggly at the next line, it gets mad. It actually errors out. I have to keep it up here. 
Now that sucks. That that was a sucky thing to fit, find out about. I did not like that part. But here's the interesting part though. Like so okay, so in order like somehow, as you can see here in IntelliJ or Goland, is basically saying, Yeah, I know you're inheriting this from the interface. How? I don't know. It's magic. Like if you're using that same method name, then automatically you are inheriting from from that interface. Like if you go to that struct, it'll take you to the interface. Super weird, right? I'm just gonna go ahead in here and say return the student. I'm not I'm not really doing anything with it. No semicolons, nothing. Can I fat arrow it? I hope to God I can. I don't know if I can. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, why would we fat arrow maybe? Thin arrow? Nope, no fat arrows, no thin arrows. You always have to put the <laughs> the the squigglies. Okay. So that's our student broker right so it's an insert student that implements that interface somehow somehow it implements that interface which means that if I have multiple interfaces how does it know which is which right like if I go here and say type I storage broker to interface and I go and say insert student like this which is a student with a variable that returns student how does it know which one I'm implementing? See, it's still referring to the other one. Is it because of the name? Is it because I I have no idea? Is it because this one was implemented first? So what if I took this one away? Would that be... Oh, I, I actually misspelled this. Okay, let's freak it out. Let's make it freak out. Okay, there you go. Insert student. So now, am I implementing... <laughs> Am I implementing two interfaces? Super confusing. Okay, you don't know which is which. It's 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 very confusing. Anyway, so it doesn't seem to really care about <clears throat> it doesn't care about the type of your interface. It doesn't really care the least about that. But anyway, let's just move on. This is a fun game, right? So this is a simple function that inserts a student. This is great. Let's go and create a service, right? So under services, I'm going to go and say students. Of course, I'm using the naming convention of .NET because uh, Golang naming convention is kind of funny and weird. Actually, let me rename this to foundations. So foundations, foundation services. And then I'm going to go under directory and say students. And then I'm going to create an interface. I student service. So this is a student service, so I'm going to go here and say type I student service, and this is an interface. And this guy doesn't really have anything other than add student, which takes student as a parameter and then returns a student as a type. So that's your interface. So far, so good. No problem there. I'm going to go back into the uh, the concrete. So this is student service. Here's where it gets weird, weird, weird. Okay, I have a type which is student service. Okay, so that's a struct. Okay, that guy needs to have an iStorage broker injected into it, right? So you're going to now play the game of references. Which reference am, am I passing? And I want to pass by reference and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go here and say, well, I have a property actually in here called a, an I storage broker, right? And that's my storage broker, like this. Okay. Golang doesn't have constructors. It doesn't understand that. So you're going to have to go implement a function, and you can name it whatever you want. So I'm just going to go here and say func, right? I wonder if I can name it the same name as the service. That would be fine student service I haven't tried that but why not right so this is my student service right and my student service initializer I'm gonna call it student service like this right and this guy will take an I storage broker as a parameter an input parameter storage broker 
as an input parameter and then we're gonna basically and it doesn't return anything we don't want it to return anything oh no it did allow me to have a function that matches the class name great we're hacking this thing <laughs> so what is this gonna do It's gonna take that student service and it's gonna give me the storage broker and I'm gonna assign that storage broker to whatever came from the outside world right so whatever I passed in as a constructor this guy is going to pick it in and, and basically work with it. Cool. I think there's a point there where I have to go and say, oh, by reference or something like that, I could steal from the other code because that one is, is like pure C. It's like C and C++ pretty much what you're doing there. Yeah. So you basically want to keep the reference of the existing. So this is like a pointer of something like that. I hate pointers. I'm not going to try to explain it. It just you're just basically saying I'm passing this by by reference. Okay, <laughs> so okay, so this is that. But then I also want to go and implement a so this is student service, and this is my student service like like this, and I want to implement this add student function. So add student, which should inherit from that interface. So that's your student and it's returning a student like this and then we're opening the parentheses and I'm just going and saying uh, watch this this is me throwing an exception it's called panic which I really love I love that name so instead of throw exception it says panic right and then I'm gonna go here and say not implemented exception or not implemented I don't know not implemented implemented exception or error or whatever so panic is like for dotnet folks is the equivalent of saying throw not implemented exception okay so far so good I need to go write a test so under tests I'm gonna go and say here is a directory of uh, services and then I'm gonna create another directory here for something called mocks because mocking mocking in in golang is in a very ancient really primitive state like think Neanderthals like it's still there's no support like, I don't know like I'm looking through the documentation and it just freaked me out so I said I'm gonna go come up with my own mocking methodology but then again I only learned this language two hours ago so I could be completely wrong here there could be some awesome libraries out there who knows right <clears throat> okay in the mocking I want to go and mock under brokers under storages so I'm basically keeping the same kind of structure but under storages I'm gonna go and do a file like this I'm gonna go and say storage broker mock right you get to appreciate the libraries that you use on daily basis and take them for granted in .NET and C sharp when you see things like that okay what is this mock it's a type so it's storage broker mock like this so it's a struct and look what I'm gonna do here here comes the hacky stuff. I'm going to basically go here and say, I want the passed in student to verify that this student has actually been passed in. So I'm going to go here and say, passed in student, which is a student model. That's one. I also want, you know, added student call count, which is an int. So I want to know how many times I called you know add student or insert student insert student call count because that's on the storage broker right it's a mock now we need to mock this function itself we need to go and say I want to mock the function you can't just go and mock the behavior like you do there you're gonna go and say funk and then here is your storage broker uh, not this one storage broker mock so that's my storage broker mock like this and then we have a function called the function has to match so insert student it has to match the actual interface so it knows that you're actually passing a function that's supposed to uh, match the interface if your brain is is kind of freaking out in panic mode that that's very normal that's very true okay so let's take this out Okay. 
Uh, so this guy is expecting to do something for me. I'm going to go here and say, oh, well, then I need that reference again then, like this. So I'm going to go here and say, okay, this storage broker mock, I want to go and say the insert call count is plus plus. So I'm incrementing the insert count. So every time this, this gets called, it increments. But also I want to go and say uh, 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 the the storage broker mock dot inserted uh, passed in student will equal the same student that I passed in, and then I'm gonna return the same student. So I'm not I'm mocking the call. I'm really I'm not really doing anything with it. So this is just a mock class that I've written here to count how many times the insert student has been called and then tell me which student has been passed in okay now let's go write a test test is gonna be fun the test has some fun fun thing that I found in it so let's just go to foundations and then under foundations I'm adding in students and then under students watch this if I'm writing a test, I can't just go and say student service tests. You have to go underscore and you have to say test like that. Like if you don't rename your file this way, it's not going to work. Why? <laughs> I don't know, but it just won't work. Okay, now let's go and write a test. There's a, a, a little kind of weird uh, thing that I need to kind of steal from the existing test just to show you what we're dealing with here. So let's go here and say, okay, funk, right? Okay, the second thing, you have to say test in the beginning of the name of the test method that you're writing. If you go and say should add student like this and go and say, go ahead and write a test for me, it's not gonna be happy. It's gonna be like, nope, you can't do that. Why? Because you have to say test first. Now I'm going to see, see, as soon as I typed this, it started to show this play button for the testing, right? What's the other error that it's complaining about? This one is one of my favorite. It's complaining that I have my squiggly in the next line. Like if I go and put it in here, no problem. But if I put it down here, it freaks out. <laughs> so, so you have that part. Now, why is this guy still airing out? Because you have to pass in, uh, what is it, the test injecting the test uh, 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 framework, I guess. So there's a variable called testing, and I'm doing like this uh, pointer, and I'm going and saying testing.t. What is this t? We don't know. It's just a, just a t. And now you have a, a test that's happy. Like if you go and run this test right now, it's going to pop up something at the bottom here that says, oh, that you have a test and it's great. It's very happy. There it is. See? Pass. So you have a test. Okay, so that's how you test things in Go. All right, but that's not how we're going to do it. We're going to go and say given, when, then. And I need to initialize a bunch of things. What's the first thing I want to initialize? I want to initialize my storage broker. So this is going to be a storage broker mock. Okay. That's my storage broker. And that's how you initialize a thing. Like in C-sharp, you could do this. You don't do that in here. You just do it like this. And there is no new. There is new, but you don't use it in here this way. Okay. So why is this guy complaining? Let's see here. This storage broker mock. Oh, this guy is erroring out because you're not using it yet. So this is one way to confuse the engineers in a way. It, it was a little frustrating for me just to see, you know, that you're, okay, you're erring out because I'm not using a variable. Okay, you're trying to make me keep the code clean and not have unused variables, but is it worth an error though? It's a little opinionated language, I have to say. Okay, so that's this guy. Great. Now I want to go initialize the actual service that I'm testing. So that's student service student service like this okay and this student service will need to be initialized with something right i think we could probably maybe i could be wrong uh, we could probably go and say storage broker oh sweet i can do that in here 
and we can go and say pass in storage broker to this will it know the difference or should I just call it storage broker mock so it knows there will it let me do that oh it's already knowing oh man that's magic I don't know about that magic storage broker mock like this okay now why is it freaking out let's see cannot assign a value to the unexported field okay can you help me can you tell me what to do let's see nope okay it's okay we did it this way so we can go and say <laughs> student service dot student service so this is our initialization and then I'm gonna pass in the storage broker mock in here right and I think I need to kinda pass it by reference like this do you see that little ampersand that's me passing it by reference okay see now that I'm seeing it this way now it also looks crappy maybe I should call it initialize let's call it initialize fine yikes so now we can call this initialize okay so that's the storage broker that's the service I'm passing in the the broker to the service great now I need a student right let's go here and say var input student equals student student like this and I'm gonna give that student some stuff I'm gonna give it an ID like 10 I don't expect there's even a randomization library in here like we use with uh, fluent assertions but this is like a proof of concept like this is me trying to tell you oh here's another hilarious one for you you have to put a comma even if there is no un incoming property in here why I don't know and as you guys service like this okay and as you guys may have noticed you know the um, this guy is airing out you'll get used to it. it beats you up to the point where your your brain starts getting wired this way so this is airing out because you're not passing it as a parameter okay let's go into the win section so student service dot add student and then input student like this so this is me kinda doing the win part let me zoom out a little bit if I can so people can see the whole test okay cool now what should we do how do you do the assertions in Golang it's super primitive you go there and you say if <laughs> here uh, var actual student equals right and I want to say that's a student type it's gonna tell me you don't need it and I'm gonna be like it's okay I want to be explicit about the types that are returned like for me as a .NET guy I'm looking at this I'm saying tell me what type this guy's returning you might say Hassan why don't you just go do it like this like normal people do I'd be like I can't it won't let me look it's not happy right why because because <laughs> can I can I do it like this nope can I do it like this nope you have to use var and the type great and this guy is erring out of course because I'm not using it okay I'm, you know we, we're getting used to it right maybe I need a new variable here called expected student that's exactly equivalent to the input student why why am I making two variables with the same value because when I go here I want to say actual student if it's not equivalent to expected student here comes the crazy part you go in there and you say give me that T do you remember that little test this thing thing that we have here we need to go here and say this oh we need parentheses too testing dot error and you can go here and type in whatever you know uh, you know whatever thing you want to do you know actual student uh, um, expected right and then I think it's a percentage and percent Q and then actual ampersand Q like this and then you're passing in expected student and actual student as parameters so it knows how super old style print F kind of C language kind of way of doing things but that's not the only thing that we're validating here right we want to also validate that the storage broker mock dot calls inserted call count if it's not equal to one then freak out then we need to go and say testing error f 
right? Uh, we should say expected insert student uh, to be called only once, to be called once, because it could be not called at all. Okay, so that's another one. What else do we have? We have storage broker mock dot a uh, call a uh, passed in passed in student if it's not equal to the input student we need to say testing error uh, testing dot error f yikes uh, expected this student to be passed but found this student Right, so this is uh, that would be input student, right? But the other one is actually storage broker mock dot passed in student. Can I break this so people can see at least what's going on? Let's see. Here is one, here's the second, here's the third. Or Matt. Yeah, I guess I can't. There's no named parameters as well. That's fantastic. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do the same thing here because just because it's purdy. I want it to be purdy, so it's going to have to be purdy. Okay, so this test here, this is literally test-driven development, right? Because I don't have an implementation for this yet. I mocked the call, but the call never happened. So let's go and run the tests. I don't know why it's showing green, though. That's kind of weird. There you go. Here's an error. What's the error? not implemented exceptions it says I, I got an, an error that says you know this value is not implemented let's have this test kind of give us errors one by one because I'm having fun here so I'm gonna go here and say well instead of panic just return the student that you passed in right so now I'm just returning this I'm trying to fool the test I'm trying to play games with the test so I'm gonna go and run it again and see what happens here Ah, look at this. Now I'm getting more. I say, it says I expected the inserted student to be called once. And I also expected, see it's collecting all the issues, right? I expected this to be passed but found nothing. Right? So this is a failure. Right? Okay. Let's play again with this test. Let's go here and say, well, you know, I want to I wanna call this storage. So that's student service. Dot storage broker. This is how you're pulling your dependency. And then you're passing in the student itself, right? And I'm saying return whatever whatever comes back. Let's play with it this way. I'm going to just create a dummy student, like a dummy student model in here that doesn't have anything in it. This test is still going to fail because I have not passed in. Watch this. I have not passed in. Watch this. I said I expected you to see. I expected you to pass this guy. But I found nothing. So it's still mad, right? Still mad at me, right? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go back and actually make it pass like normal people. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put this in here, and then I'm gonna go back to my tests. And I'm gonna run the tests. And boom, now I have all the tests passing. That's test driven development in Go. If you feel like you need to go take a shower. Very rightfully so. I need to make this student as well because it's not explicit about its type, even though the ID is, is not happy with it. I also noticed that it creates its own kind of namespace and packages because there is similarity. So instead of me following the same kind of structure, it's kind of Im impeding me from being able to follow to follow the same structures. It's kind of annoying, right? Anyway, so that's that's Golang. It's uh. You know, you can implement Golang using the standard. You know, it, it took me like literally two hours just to kind of look around and kind of, you know, kind of zoned out a couple of times just thinking about w what what went wrong in my life that I'm doing this, you know, on a, on a Friday night. But uh, it, it's great. You know, take a look at it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you like what you see. Uh, it's definitely something to kind of start a conversation. I'm pretty sure, like the gurus of Golang, I'm pretty sure I violated a whole bunch of things just doing that. But taking the language and making it follow the standard is not really that hard. You have a broker, you have a service, you have a test, you have a model. Pretty much the same thing. If if I get too excited about you know a different language in the future, I'm probably gonna 
or maybe I could just make it a series. Like I could just go and say, okay, you know, here's here's how we're gonna do it for every language in the world. Um, it might it might probably be useful if I kind of pushed all of this to GitHub. Can I do this? So code maybe uh, v VCS share project on GitHub. That's hilarious. Origin add account login via GitHub. Authorize GitHub. Read and write access. Whoa. Okay. Authorize JetBrains. Use GitHub Mobile. Have to log in and do things. Come on. Come on. Give me something. Any second now. We'll see. Yeah, there you go. Sometimes you have to open the app, your two-factor app, to actually kind of log in. Okay, here we go. And then, okay, so that's authorized now. So hopefully I can create a, a repository, right? So here you go. And then, you know, uh, uh, building a simple uh, app in Go language, in Golang, according to the standard. According to the standard, and then share. Is it gonna give me the the good stuff? What is all that? Oh my lord! Uh, yeah, initial commit. Why not? Uh, don't care about that. Maybe get ignore is okay. I don't know. Don't care about that really. And just add. Just push it. Just. Just put it out there. It looks like it looks like the ID is simple though. Like like pushing these things is super 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 simple. And it's saying hey, I I created the project for you. That's great. Here's a project in core. Follows the standard to the last minute of detail. Right now, <laughs> of course, some people are gonna be asking the question like. Well, how do I? Where's the entity framework? <laughs> how do I integrate this with? Um, with a SQL database, I don't know if there is enough libraries and enough communities to support that. You know, that's not the that's not even the point of this uh, video. The point is to show you how you can easily kind of implement standard compliant things according according to the standard in any programming language you choose, right? And this is probably the very first time you'll find a repository that's marked in in GoLang. Um, if I if I can hide the camera here, you'll see that GitHub is marking this in GoLang. It's hilarious, but you know something for you guys to kind of you know a little entertaining things for for everyone. Um, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, if you find this a little bit interesting, maybe get a little chuckle and a little laugh, you know, out of some of the you know kind of naiveness that I'm having, you know, trying to work with this language. You know, this is what happens when a .NET guy you know, for like two decades, tries to play with with a different programming language or a different framework. Uh, if you find this fun, you know, feel free to share it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you in another video. Take care.